I'm hoping it's going to be an exciting new camera day because I've come here to Froome Camera Fair at the Cheese and Grain in Froome. What a lovely, nice name for a venue, the Cheese and Grain. I've been on the lookout for a film Leica for a while, so I'm hoping there's going to be something in there that takes my interest. I don't want anything too old, but I don't want anything too new because, quite frankly, I can't afford it. So, I'm trying to find a little bit of a bargain that sort of fits my needs, has the Leica name on it, and shoots 35mm film. So, let's have a look inside. I've no idea what to expect. Never been to a camera fair before. It's my first time. Exciting. <laughs> Driven over an hour and a half to get here, so I'm hoping, hoping we get something out of it. So far, no likers. No like, no luck. No like it, no luck, no like it, no. <laughs> Can't make that work. No. There were so many cameras and lenses and associated stuff like prints and books and some stuff I can't tell you what it was. Everything from iconic Polaroid land cameras to miniature cameras, some binoculars and vaguely related optical bits crept in too. Everything but Leicas. So I stopped looking and instead checked out the cheap stuff over at the Bargain Mins. I always wonder what it's like to use these old film cannons. Spider-Man camera. Sticky. So I might have a lead on some Likers. Too old. Too new. Too expensive. So there wasn't very much in there, just a handful of Leicas really, and it was all pretty much stuff that I didn't want. Either really old stuff that didn't have any light metering, like the 3A, or really modern digital stuff that's out of today's price range. But they did have this. Leica R6. Not the most iconic Leica, nor the most cutting edge. But in 1988, when it was released, this would have cost $3,000 just for the body. That's around £6,000 in modern English money. You can pretty much say that together with the lens, this was a £10,000 bit of kit back in the day, when adverts would boast about it not being for amateurs who needed to rely on computer chips. You can't see it, but I'm doing air quotes with my fingers. No, you needed to be a professional to use this fully manual camera. Leica had fannied around with program modes in SLRs for a while, but then decided to strip things back in the late 80s to make this. The first mechanical manual exposure only SLR since they stopped making the Leicaflex SL2. And in 2023, when there's a bit of a film renaissance and pushback against all things digital, and people are worrying about those darn computer chips taking over our lives with the likes of AI and chat GPT, we've almost come full circle. The body's in mint condition, appears to be working, but was sold as untested. It came with a 50mm f2 summer f2 summercron lens which is also in mint condition and for both of these i paid 400 quid the mechanical features all appear to be fine so if i get home and put a battery in this and the light meter works then i will be very happy because the lens alone has been selling on ebay for between three and six hundred pounds and the body for between four and five hundred I also picked up one of the very sexy Yashica Electro 35s. I've been lusting after these for a while and got a GSN model with a case for just £10. It even comes with a battery and the electronics are working. Amazing, but back to the Leica. Good news, I've put some batteries in it and we are all systems go. The exposure meter works, the illuminated dials work and I am one happy bunny. The question now is does the metering work accurately? Does the camera itself work mechanically properly? More than me just casting my eye over it at a camera fair and are there any other issues light light like 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 light leaks oh my god it's time to take some photos yeah. 
So I've come to Burnham on Sea, a little walk along the beach, clear the head, and take some photos with the Leica R6 with some Portra 400 in it. One thing that's already cropped up when talking to people about the Leica R6 is the cost. Yeah, all right, it's not gonna be on most people's recommended list of sensible and affordable good cameras to buy. But this is photography, and what I like about that is that not much of it comes with common sense and rationale and being sensible. This is chemicals, the passion for capturing moments, the sex appeal of the tools that we love to get our hands on. Yes, you could get a Nikon F or a Canon A1 or endless other cheaper cameras, but would they move you and inspire you to create? Yeah, for a lot of people they will. But for some people, it might be a Leica. And that's all right. Among the other cameras I've got is a Yashica FXD, which is as far from the Leica R6 almost as possible as you can get. But you know what? I bloody love it. I use that camera a lot. It's one of my favorite cameras. The thing is, it's not about snobbery. It's about inspiration and passion. And, and I love using this Leica. I love holding it. I don't care that anyone sees me with it with a Leica badge on it. It's not about that. It's about what I get out of it. And uh, hopefully get quite a lot. Otherwise, I tell you what, that was a lot of 400 quid wasted. <laughs> After shooting a couple of rolls, I can tell you I love the R6. It's back to basics, just you and the dials working together to capture a moment. It's minimalist, but what it does, it does with excellence. It's built like a tank and feels like the most solid 35mm camera I've ever got my hands on. The shutter feels like stopping a punch from a small child in a very reassuring way that some cameras don't. I love the satisfying clunks and clicks of the build quality, the weight and feel of it in my hands, how easy it is to use, the two options for metering, the illuminated dials, the big depth of field preview lever, and even the story of how I came to own it. I haven't gone into the Leica glass at all, but suffice to say, the Summicron lens is fantastically sharp, quite sought after, and a big part of the successful recipe. If you're watching this and still wondering what all the Leica fuss is, I go into how my journey with Leica started in a video I made about the Leica X1, which is also a good video to watch if you want to find out what some of the most ridiculously expensive cameras in history were. Spoilers, it's a Leica fest. The takeaway from this video isn't anything to do with Leica, really. It's about getting to a camera fair and picking up a bargain, because all I can think about now is shooting that £10 Electro 35. And that will bring me as much joy as the Leica at least until the next camera. See you next time.